Welcome back to part 3 of the Tic Tac Toe video. Let's see where we stopped on video 2. So we got the basic board working and we just added a click event on the first box. So as you see if I press, if I click on it, it uh, brings an X there. If I click on the other picture boxes, nothing comes up. So let me add the click event on at least three more boards or let's do it on five boards and then you guys can do the rest uh, we now just have to make sure we're using the correct one so picture two is row zero column one which is first row and second so remember we are using zero index so everything will be less than one picture three is row zero column 2 picture 4 will be row 1 column 0 and picture 5 will be row 1 column 1 all right now if we run this every and we click on the board or oh sorry the grids or the cells everything should become an X I click here I click here see this became an X and these were already X so now we are able to click on the picture boxes and change the image but somehow we still have to add the logic or what I used to uh, what I call the wiring so that the images are coming from a data structure and the data structure in our case is the two-dimensional array so one thing we have to do now is also allow for users to uh, play their move right so right now if somebody is clicking it's every time it's coming an X but if a second player is moving, it should come up with a zero. And all that logic will actually go inside the class. Another thing we have to account for, like when somebody is, when you're actually playing your tic-tac-toe game, if this uh, board is already X, or say this one is X, right? If somebody clicks on it and we are able to overwrite it, that should not be allowed. So if this board already has a value either X or zero, user should not be allowed to change that value. So we also have to add that logic in our uh, program, either in the form or either in the tic-tac-toe class. So now let's go back to the tic-tac-toe board class. And we know that we already have a system in place where if we get the get updated board, and we return it as a string it's going to reflect whatever the array has the value the array has so now we can display the board very correctly based on whatever the values are in this two, uh, three by three two dimensional array so first let us then this um, class is created let's add the in call to the initialize board function in the constructor so this is going to initialize the board so now we are going to create two loops INTI row comma INTI column you can also declare a single data type value like multiple variables of a single data type in one line now we are going to execute a loop I row is equal to zero I row is less than three and I row plus plus so for each row and we'll just copy this code let's add the, the, this thing here and just change it to I column so what we are doing for every cell or every row comma column combination we are going to set its value to blank and we are just going to say board I row comma I column is equal to blank the question is why are we getting an error here oh as usual I signed it at the wrong way the jagged array now again it's always a good practice to add these uh, braces when you're defining just to make code a little bit more clear and I think we are missing a brace here there we go if you click on this it shows the 
corresponding brace for the pair. All right, now we have initialized the board. Let's go back in a form. One thing we see here is that we have the main tic-tac-toe board, but when the form is being created, we have to call draw board again with the current state of the board. So what we are going to do is get the current state of the board. Now here we have a design flaw. And the flaw is that when we are getting the board state, this is the only function that returns the board state, but it takes an input as a row and a column, which means we can only get the board state when the user makes a move. So that is going to create a problem because when you start the game and the form comes up, user hasn't made a move. You just want to get the current board state. So what you want to do is essentially capture the values of this two-dimensional array and then change the pictures in that board based on the value of the two-dimensional array when it starts up. Now obviously we have initialized the two-dimensional array to be blank so everything will display as a white square. There won't be either a x or zero on it but we need to figure out a way how we do that. So let's go back to our function and let's have this. If row and column are both equal or I mean not equal if they're less than one, if row is less than zero and and this is how you give a multiple condition in an if, if then else statement and column is less than zero. So we are just going to ret return the board. So in this case, if we pass a value of minus one for row and a minus one for column or any value less than zero, it's just going to return whatever the board state. It's not going to change the board state because this line here is the line that's changing the board state. It's setting it to zero or one. But if we return the board earlier, we are not going to allow this state change to be done. So let's go back to the form and we just say uh, we have to get the current board state. Actually now it makes it even more easier because we don't have to call this function. We can directly get the board state from here. board is equal to main board dot get updated board and all we have to do is pass minus one and minus one means minus one and minus one means we are essentially just reading the board state without asking the program to change the state of the board now there again there are several ways of doing this this way is not exactly the most elegant way but for a starting class this is okay and now when we are calling this uh, function here on the picture box, we are passing it the board variable. We don't need to do that. So it becomes pretty easy because when we call draw board, draw board function will figure out the two dimensional array for the board itself. All right, so this makes it very clean. Now all we have to do when the form comes up, we just have to call the draw board function again. And this draw board function will make the board based on the initial state of the board and the initial state is defined here. We are setting everything to blank. So now what we expect is that when the form comes up, we will only see white, the blank uh, square in each of those cells. So let's see, this is working as we expected to. Oops. There we go, everything is blank. So our board state is working and now the previous function will work. If I click here, 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 it's adding X over here. All right. So now we just need to figure out on the logic of the game. So this is the beauty of using a tic-tac-toe board class because on the form, you are just concerned about displaying the board based on the value of this three-dimensional array, which we called as the board. How you maintain that three-dimensional array and making changes to that three-dimensional array is all in the tic-tac-toe board class. So here what we uh, are following is called the separation of concern principle. So UI 
building the UI and building the UI based on a data structure is all concentrated in the form code but maintaining the logic for that data structure that maintains the state of the board is in a separate class so we are pretty much done with most of the changes in the form and now the time is to focus on the logic of the game so you know programming is very complex by nature so it's very important to make things as simple as possible so now on the tic-tac-toe board class we are only concerned about the logic we are not concerned about how uh, the board displays or when the user clicks and all of that it's just maintaining a 3d data structure which will have the logic and updating that board based on the logic that you want to apply all right so this is the main function where we are getting input when the user changes the board so first thing the earlier in this video i had mentioned that what if a user enters or just clicks on something for example if we have a zero here i click on here i should not be allowed to change this to an x so what we can do is this we already know the row and column the user clicked because that's coming from the form we can say if the board is not blank if board row comma column oops oops is not equal to blank which means it's already has an x and y error we should not allow this change to happen so what we can do is what uh, we can throw an exception now we haven't covered exception handling yet so we probably cannot use that route so what I suggest is let's create another function that says we just returns a true or false and just say is is allowed move and I will just say int row comma int column and all this will return if the move is allowed it will say true and otherwise it will return a false and how do we know if a move is allowed is if we say board row comma column is not equal to blank which means there's already an x or zero assigned return false else return true and now we have to go back in the form code and make sure we are using this logic so set image based on value draw board So we are getting get updated board and we are calling uh, on each of the click events. So here's something we have to do now because we have to repeat this multiple times. So we have to make sure we minimize the code value. So let's create another function here that we are going to call every time somebody clicks on any of those picture boxes we'll just say update board and we are going to take the location and this logic here we are going to move to inside this function so we are going to say get updated board and rather than passing hard-coded value of zero zero we will pass it the row and column and now from the picture box dot click we are just going to say update board and pass 0 comma 0 so the same thing except just minimizing the code by using one common function so all I have to do is just update this so we are anyway reducing the two lines to one line here but you will see why this is very useful so and this is one comma 0 and this is which was one comma one now in the updated update board function we can add a logic to check whether this is a legal move or not so what was the function so we'll call main board 
dot is allowed move and we'll see if row and this specific row and column can be changed if allowed move then only make the change otherwise or even draw the board right because you won't need to make any changes there else what we need to do now is give an error message to the user like we can do message box not show this move is not allowed and a message box comes up as a pop-up uh, on the screen that tells you that you cannot uh, of whatever message you have but in this case our message box is telling us that we cannot make a move on that board so let's run this now Oops, we have some errors. Expected, looks like we, oh, we added a comma. Instead of a semicolon. Let's run this. So now I click on this, I click on this. Now what if a user clicks on this accidentally or purposefully, who knows? In this case, a message box should come up. Click, this move is not allowed because somebody has already clicked on it and already selected to make the positions there. So this way now you can add that easily add that check by creating common functions so you can see the power of functions here how they are useful to minimize the code and there's if there's some change in logic like we want to change the logic how the message box is displayed it only comes in one place otherwise you will have to replicate this for each of those picture boxes which will be a real pain All right, so now we can check if a move is legal. The program gives an error, move is not allowed. If I click here, I'm getting the correct messages. Now the next thing we need to do is go back into a tic-tac-toe board class and make sure that if the user presses X, the next time it comes up as a zero. And that will be some logic how we control and toggle which player gets to move. And I will show that in the next video. Till then, see you.